Hello, welcome to The Medical Maze. I'm your host, Don Ellen Ray, and today we're going to be talking to my special guest, Brooke Abner, and her son has a brain tumor called pilomyxoid astrocytoma. Thank you. I'm just surprised I got that out in one flow. Yes. But first, as always, let's go and say hello to my co-host, Phil. How are you doing today? You know, this is uh, something that I've never heard of. And if you've never heard of it, this is we're going to have a lot of information that could benefit you. So I'm excited to be here and glad to interview Brooke. Oh, I'm just excited, too. And I'm so glad she agreed to do this. Um, Mm -hmm. Full disclosure, Brooke is a cousin of mine. And I've been hearing this story of her son, Jackson, for many years now. And I just thought that she has such a intriguing, interesting, strong, powerful story to tell that I just really wanted to share it with everyone. So let's go and without further delay, let's say hello to Brooke. Hi, Brooke. Hi, how are you? Oh, we're great. And thank you so much for being on here. Um, As I said, your child, Jack, Brax, uh, shoot, that's my child, Jackson. (laughs) It's close. (laughs) It's close. Has um, this brain tumor called pilomyxoid astrocytoma Mm -hmm. or PMA for short, correct? Yes. Okay. So just to kind of, let's get into some of the basics to begin with. So what, what is this and how does it start and what, what do we know about it? Um, well, we didn't know anything. He, I guess he was born with it, but we didn't know. Mm. Uh, So we didn't find out till he was just shy of three. Wow. So were there symptoms or what, what were you seeing so that you know, were there developmental delays or what were you noticing? No, he was actually, he was perfectly fine. He just, um, he had failure to thrive and he, when he was probably about two, I'd say he kind of started having some headaches, but we get migraines and things. So we just kind of thought it was that we took him to three different doctors and they all said oh well you and your husband are small so he's small and Mm. I kept changing doctors because I was like okay well my two-year-old should be growing he shouldn't be the size of an 18 month old or a 12 month old so I took mother knows oh I was like this is this is crazy so finally Mm -hmm. I took him to a new pediatrician who we still see this many years later it's 12 years later and he um she said, you know what, let's get a CAT scan, just check things out. <clears throat> so she sent us, and we had an original appointment, I think it was February 14th, 2012, for a CAT scan. And on the 8th, or the 7th of February in 2012, my husband brought the boys in to see me at work. And Jackson was having a lot of headaches, um, and he'd want to be held upside down which was very odd mm. to us. Like we didn't understand it. And, um, but he would be held upside down and he would be fine. But on the 7th of February, when he came into my job, he climbed under the table at my job and just started screaming and crying and throwing up. Mm. So I called shop. So children's of Philadelphia the next day on the 8th. And they said, bring him in tomorrow. We'll move up his MRI or his CAT scan. Mm-hmm. So February 9th was a Thursday. I brought him in. My mom and I took him. We planned on going in for a CAT scan and then going to IHOP for breakfast. And um, we were there. He did his CAT scan. So big. He didn't have to be sedated, anything. He just laid there and got his CAT scan. And that's good. We we're Yeah, it was pretty amazing for a two-year-old to just lay there. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly not, what I was thinking. <laughs> not being that's bothered by anything. So we were getting ready to leave, and the doctor comes in, and they said, okay, we're going to do an MRI. And okay. we're like, okay, why? They said, there's just something of concern. So they sent him through right away, put him in the MRI machine, 
Next thing you know, there's a call into my room where we were waiting and it was my son's pediatrician and she said, I wanted to let you know that they found a tumor. They mm. found a mass in your son's brain. Um, you need to call your husband, call your dad, because my mom was with me. They said, have them come. So the next thing I know is a, another doctor is in and they said, we're taking your son in for emergency surgery. So Jackson started having a runny nose just a few days before. This whole time I thought it was a sinus infection. Yeah, um, sure. Runny nose, headache, like then the vomiting. I'm like, oh, this is odd. So the doctor came in and he said, we're doing surgery tomorrow morning, six o'clock. Oh. So they admitted us, six o'clock, they get him, they take him in, they come in to talk to us. I think it was probably about one in the afternoon. And they said, we removed 70% of a large tumor mm, from Jack. Um, hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and optic nerves. And um, they said, this is cancer. <clears throat> and they said, the runny nose that you saw was actually cerebral fluid. Oh. They said, wow. had we waited till February 14th the next week, he would have passed over the weekend. Oh, so, wow. That was just I just can't his, imagine. Well, his tumor was blocking ventricles, three ventricles in his brain. So all the fluid was coming out his nose. They said probably by the weekend it would be coming out of his ears and he just would have passed over the weekend. Oh, so, wow. It was rough, but they took out 70% on Friday morning at 6 o'clock. I have pictures of him all bandaged up. He came out that Friday and Valentine's Day was coming, so my mom made him um, Valentine cutout cookies. Aww. And she brought him one and he sat there with a drain in his head and stitched from side to side, front to back, eating a cookie <laughs> like it was nothing. Really? And he was how old again? He was Two? just a month shy of three. Three. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I can't imagine as a parent to, to hear that kind of news. Do they know what the cause of something like this? I, I know you said that he was probably no. born with it, but there's really no, no known cause. Not that we're aware of. All I know is his surgery was the 10th and on the 15th, they placed a shunt in his head to reroute the, the fluid around the tumor okay so that was the beginning of our 12-year journey now <laughs> so so they could only get i guess 70 percent of it so was the idea that that hopefully it would stay there and do less damage if they could keep it there well like what it, what they thought was that we'll take out the 70 percent. they couldn't take out the whole thing because it was intertwined in his hypothalamus, his pituitary gland, and his optic nerves. So it was, all of that went right through the tumor. Oh. Um, so they said, we can't take the whole thing. Okay. So they said, we're going to watch and wait. Because at this point, they hadn't done a biopsy. But the looks of it, they thought it looked like cancer. But they said, you know what, they thought it was actually a PA, which okay. is a pilocytic astrocytoma, which is not cancerous, slow growing. They remove parts, they leave it, and it's pretty much fine. Oh, Okay. Um, but after the biopsy came back, this was within the week, they said, this is a PMA and this is cancer. Oh my gosh. So there's no like chemo radiation, well, nothing that would have helped shrink it of any Well, kind, what they or? did is they, they said, let's just watch and wait. Let's just see what it does. Okay. So we did, we went home. Um, I want to say it was right before the 25th of February. So we were in about two weeks and he was okay. Um, he was okay. And then it was April and he was sitting in the living room. We we're just taking his brother to school and he was sitting there and he grabbed his head and he started screaming and throwing up. Oh. So I grabbed him up. I put him in the car, I rushed him to the hospital. Um, they did an MRI and they said 70% we took out came back. Oh my. So oh, it had and how long? Less than eight weeks. Oh, wow. So we started, we put a, they put a port in and they started chemo on May 1st. So he has been on eight different chemo protocols. Okay. Um, one of them started to shrink it, but then it caused some, um, some areas of his bone 
to die off. So he had a vascular necrosis in his hip where his bone marrow was just shutting down and dying. Oh, gosh. So they had to stop it. So that was up until, so it started in 2012. That went through the end of 2013. And then we were accepted on a study at Cincinnati okay. Children's Hospital Medical Center okay. for, his, um, for his type of tumor. And then we moved in January of 2014 from New Jersey to Northern Kentucky for Jackson to go to Cincinnati Children's. Okay. Okay. And he started a, a protocol, uh, um, a study. Um, I want to say it was at the end of January, beginning of February of 2014, we started a study where he could do it at home and he took chemotherapy twice a day at home. So he learned to swallow pills. Okay. And it was horrible. I had to suit up in a gown and gloves and a mask when I'd give it to him. If he threw up, I had to completely gown up to clean it. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. He lived by timers. So he couldn't eat for two hours before the chemo and an hour after. So here's my five, almost five-year-old son this is all he knows, taking his timers and and um, doing his chemotherapy, waiting his time. And then he was on that chemotherapy for two months when I went to the doctors with him because we were at the grocery store and all of a sudden his lips turned blue and he started shaking. Mm. Oh and I kept gosh. the thermometer with me because he started throwing up and having a headache. I'm like, oh no, the tumor's growing. Well, I took his temperature and his temperature went down to 97, 96, 95. Oh. So I rushed him to the hospital, covered him in blankets. We got him there and his temperature was plummeting. They warmed him up. They gave him um, some medication. They sent us home. Um, so that was probably about April, I want to say 15th of 2014. On April 28th, 2014, I was homeschooling him. He woke up. He was acting a little funny. I called my mom. She was in New Jersey. And I said, Jackson is acting funny. Mm -hmm. He's not remembering any of the things that I've taught him, anything that we've been working on for months. So I let him take a nap. Um, mm -hmm. We went about our day, just thought he was tired. That afternoon, um, I decided to take my boys to get allergy shots, which we lived at the time about an hour and 15 minutes from the hospital. The allergy yeah. shots were only 15 minutes from the hospital. <laughs> so I don't know why, because we usually went on Tuesdays, and this was a Monday. And I took the boys to do allergy shots a day early. And um, we called my mom and dad. The boys were talking. And all of a sudden, we're sitting there. And Jackson starts screaming, throwing up, and passing out, standing oh in the car. So I quick got him in his seat, buckled up. He kept coming in and out of this I guess it was consciousness. He would pass out, wake up, throw up, and scream. I got 15 minutes away to the hospital in probably seven minutes. <laughs> oh, I, I, don't I can't imagine. I can't no, imagine I as a parent going through that and watching your child go through that and feeling it was horrible. I don't know, helpless well, his, or yeah, uh, his little brother was sitting there, who was seven at the time, sitting in the seat next to him. Just trying to keep him calm and just terrified. So I have a little boy. I don't know what's going on with him. Crying and throwing up. And then I have his brother just terrified. Of course. Oh, my gosh. It affects everybody. I mean, everyone that was in your family. Yeah. And, well, and my nobody parents has are answers. in New Jersey. They're like, what's going on? Yeah. So we got yeah. to the hospital. They grabbed him. They took him in. They sedated him. They took an MRI. And we found out that his tumor had hemorrhaged and he had a massive <gasps> brain hemorrhage. Oh. So they admitted him and he slipped into a coma. And oh, um, he had five. almost, yeah, he had 106 point, 106 point four fever. What? Yeah. And he was, my mom and dad jumped in the car and left and made it to New Jersey. They stayed at the Ronald McDonald house for, so this was April through May. 
And I remember days, I, I mean, we lived in the hospital for three months. Oh, I bet. Jack and, I. and my mom and dad would stand there alternating. So he had a rectal cooling probe in to mm -hmm. cool his core. Mm -hmm. And he was laying on a cooling blanket and my parents were alternate. My mom and dad had a big ice bin and they were helping me out with him so I could also go see my oldest at home and be there for both boys. <clears throat> but they would put a ice cold washcloth on Jackson under his arms, mm -hmm. on his forehead. And as soon as my mom would put it on him, my dad would have one ready because it would turn hot and they'd switch. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So for three days he ran a fever over 106. Oh, wow. They came to us and they told us, they said, um, he's not going to make it. Oh. They said, he's not going to make it. Um, if he does, he's going to be a vegetable. He'll have no memory, he'll never walk, he'll never talk, he'll never feed himself. <clears throat> they had a tube in his head, a drain. So it was called an ICP monitor. And it would measure the pressure from the hemorrhage. And it would slowly drain out blood that the tumor was hemorrhaging. So we oh. could see it. And uh, they took out his shunt. And um, well, hold on, Brooke. Just, hold on, hold on. Before we even continue with that, you, you, you said something about how they told you that he was barely going to survive. If he was, he was going to be a vegetable, mm -hmm. right? When they told you that, what was going through you and your husband's mind when you heard that? I cried. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I would have been just, in the floor. Yeah. I just started praying. I just started praying. I was like, no. And my mom looked at me and she said, the doctors don't always have the last word. So... Smart lady, huh? Yeah, they have. Now, is, um, is this so rare, or, or or do they just not know what to to do for it, or is there just limited things they can do for it? Um, I guess all of the above. <laughs> okay, okay. The, um, well, with kids, it stinks because all you see all of these fundraisers and raising money for childhood cancer because only four percent of funding goes to childhood cancer. So our children are receiving adult dose chemotherapy. Oh. Yeah, there is, I mean, there are some new studies they are advancing, but childhood cancer is on the back burner. So out of the eight chemotherapies that Jackson had, they're adult chemotherapies. Oh. Wow, I would think that would be way too strong for kids. Of course, I'm not a doctor, so... I don't but, know how it works. I just know that all the studying I've done and all the research we've done, it's kids don't have, we don't have funding for our children's cancers. So. Oh my I mean, gosh. So, so what about like, I mean, aren't there, I don't know. I'm just thinking the ones I hear St. Jude's and hospitals and different things like that. And, um, <clears throat> I, I, you just don't is, is the money, or, or, do you feel that the money is just, isn't going toward the research piece of it? Is that? Well, what? there are some hospitals like Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. They have a research center. Okay. Um, they're doing research all the time. It's just we don't get enough funding. There's not enough out there. I mean, we get one month September where they donate to St. Jude. But I mean, St. Jude is a great hospital, but they turn Jackson away. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, they couldn't do anything for him. So they, wow. That's got to be really dis discouraging to hear. <laughs> One of the top mm -hmm. hospitals in the country is saying that they can't do anything for you. Well, they they usually try to take cases that they know that they can help. But Jackson's uh, is unknown. And then with the hemorrhage, he's been turned away from <sighs> both St. Jude's, the one in Tennessee and Jacksonville, Florida. He was turned away from the Dana-Farber Clinic. He was turned away from Memorial Sloan Kettering. Um, really? Is it? Yeah. The, are they saying that you're getting the care that they would give, or at the time they said they couldn't do anything different than Chop was doing? Oh, so we stayed with Chop until we went to Cincinnati, but then they ran out of options, so we came back to Chop. And that's in Philadelphia, you're saying? Yes, that's in Philly. But um, oh. we're now at a point where. He's been pretty stable. Like, 
small amount of growth, but nothing worth worrying about or saying, hey, we're going to jump on chemo again. So he's been off of chemotherapy since October 31st, 2014, because he went into bone marrow failure. Okay. And his bone marrow just wasn't making the, the cells or anything it needed to, to, to fight the chemo. Oh, so wow. he, um, he's been off. It's, started recovering in the last year his bone marrow has oh really but i mean he, um, like yeah. a transplant wouldn't help him at all no so the <laughs> we wanted to do a transplant yeah his best bet would be his bone marrow coming from his little sister okay but it's only a 33 percent success rate and then he would still have to be on medications so that he didn't his body didn't deny it so we didn't okay. do it but that would just fix that one piece, right? So, so going back it to when, it's only a, yeah, it's uh, only a thirty-three percent chance it would work. So, going back to then to when they it grew back, and then they did the chemo, and then they told you about him, you know, when when he'd be a vegetable or live in a vegetative state, and um, so then. You went in after that, you did other chemo. I mean, you said you did eight different kinds. Mm -hmm. And I assume that's over years, right? Um, that was from 2012 to 2014. Okay. And how many different protocols? Eight different protocols. Eight different protocols. Mm -hmm. And none of them seemed to help any better than the other. No, none of them really worked. Um, one of them, it kind of slowed the growth. But um, as of right now, it's, pretty close to the original size it was before they resected it. So wow. before they took the 70% out. Can they um, do that again? No. Okay. Mm -mm. They, I that. actually was just told he had an MRI in November and they told us his tumor is stable. So we were thrilled, but we started noticing that his vision was getting worse. Mm. This was in January. So we took him to the neuro ophthalmologist to have his vision checked and he lost, he's already visually and hearing impaired, um, but he lost so much vision. And then the, the neuro ophthalmologist sat us down and told us, he was like, his tumor has actually, there's other spots in his brain now. So it's kind of oh. metastasized, but the oncologist didn't tell me that. So I emailed her and she said, well, at this point we're not doing any more chemo because his bone marrow reserves are not good. Radiation's off the table. And because of his hemorrhage, they're afraid to do another surgery. They're afraid it'll hemorrhage again. Oh. So kind of no more options really. Oh no. But he's doing okay right now. So we have our next MRI in May. Unless he has headaches, I'm leaving it at May. I'm not going to push it up. Yeah. So we're so, having some issues lately, but the headaches are okay. <laughs> so he was five with the hemorrhage, right? Mm -hmm. And they did, they thought then that he wasn't going to maybe progress much. And here he is. How, how old is he now? Well, when he was two and he was diagnosed, they told us he's probably only going to make it to five. Oh, so wow. When he turned five and he had the hemorrhage, we're like, well, he made it to five. And then when they came in, they said he's not going to make it through this. If he does, it'll be a miracle, but he's going to have X, Y, and Z. He's going to be a vegetable. He'll never remember. But when he was in a coma, he didn't remember. He had no memory. Um, okay. When he woke up, he didn't remember so much. He battles um, short-term memory loss right now. Okay. Um, He's visually impaired. He's hearing impaired. Um, it, cognitively, he's delayed. He's autistic. Um, autistic. It was that as a result of this, or do they know, or would he have been autistic? Not sure yeah, because could have been he anyway. was diagnosed it too, so they don't know. Could it be from the hemorrhage? Could it be from the tumor? But a lot of his stuff actually started after the hemorrhage. The only thing we battled before he had the hemorrhage was cancer and the vision impairment wow so he has um hearing aids 
I assume. He does. For the, okay. Um, and then, and how old did you say he's, he is now? He's almost 15, two more weeks. Wow. So he made it 10 years past that they killed him. Wow. Then you know what? You're doing some, some great things then. So I assume, so does he go to a special school or he can does. he? Oh, mm-hmm. does he? Okay. He goes to a school where they focus more on life skills than actual learning because he can't read. Um, he can't write. He's academically about five, I'd say. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. So he's really good with life skills. Um, but he'll never drive. Um, I'm not sure what kind of job he'll have. I'm sure we'll find something for him, but, um, can he do routine or repetitive things? I mean, that he's okay everything with that? is repetitive. Okay. Everything. Okay. Like um, every day, he gets shots. I have to do a shot every day. Every um, day. Every day in his leg, um, he takes probably about five pills in the morning, four at night, um, some medications through his g-tube to prevent migraines um i do give him alternative things okay but and then he has a g-tube so gastronomy tube because he doesn't have a thirst mechanism oh okay. he can sit and eat a whole can of salt and vinegar pringles and not get thirsty mm-hmm. <laughs> so we have to do 60 to 70 ounces of water a day on him Oh, There's wow. So is that where, because where the tumor is sitting, it, it's, mm-hmm. it, it, it blocks the regulating of the body? like a That's person? part of it, but the hemorrhage actually damaged um, oh. his control center in his brain. So he, he runs a temperature of 102 every day. No, he's not sick. His just temperature regulators are off. Um, he's never thirsty. He's really not hungry too much, so we do feeds through his G-tube. Um, okay. He has some. So does he doesn't like like typical kid stuff like pizza or sometimes chicken nuggets. Yeah, chicken nuggets. Sometimes. That's like that's like the autism staple food is the chicken nugget. That's like the new logo. It's forget the puzzle piece. It's a chicken nugget. It is. It's a chicken nugget. It's a Chick Fil A chicken nugget. <laughs> my 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 son is the McDonald's chicken nugget. That's uh... oh my gosh. It's definitely there's there's chicken nuggets. He'll eat those, but. His thing right now is clubhouse crackers with feta cheese. That's like a distinguished <laughs> taste. Yeah. That, that, Crunchy and sophisticated, salty. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, he does he does like he switches between what chicken nuggets he likes, so he loves Chick-fil-A. But lately he's been like, Mommy, will you make me chicken nuggets in the air fryer? So <laughs> Oh really? He likes yeah. mom's chicken nuggets. Okay. He does. That's all right. But if we make homemade ones, he doesn't want them. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, no. wow. Yeah, there you go. But there we do, go. we get his nutrition in through um, some feeds, some organic feeds that we do. So he gets them in the morning and in the evening. And um, everything is very, very routine. He has to have a shower by three in the afternoon. He gets home from school, wants a shower. Okay. He, he has to have um, snuggle time with my mom. By seven thirty, at night, sitting on the couch with my mom Aww. before bed. So it's everything is routine. Same exact thing for lunch every single day of his life. <laughs> Same thing for breakfast every day. Does he does he have a concept of time though? Like he understands this is six o'clock. This is seven o'clock. He understands it's breakfast time. It's he knows he gets his water done at six in the morning, nine eleven one three in bedtime. Mm. But he doesn't know what time it is. He just knows from routine okay so when he goes to so how long does he goes to school right so how long Mm -hmm. during the day does he go it's a full day oh does he really so does he picks him up and at 7 25 and then he gets home at three o'clock oh really Mm -hmm. does he like that does he enjoy the other kids he does oh that's because he doesn't feel different oh that's so that's huge yeah Yeah. he has some little best friends at school the only thing that stinks is because the kind of school he goes to the parents are all like me and very protective and 
Yep. They don't do the play dates and all that. And mm, mm-hmm. So he's never had a birthday party. Um, yep. And his birthday's coming up and he's asking, can my friends come? But none of their parents will let him come. Oh, really? Um, Is it yeah. just because are they in the same routine or they have things going on that they have to do yeah, the same? There, there's a mix of kids from yeah. um, severely autistic to... It's mostly a lot of autistic children, um, some Down syndrome children. Um, okay. They all have some disabilities, but they're all they're all so good together. Well, do they? And Jackson loves it. Well, do they do his water and stuff at school? Mm-hmm. Like he can get those therapies at school, yeah. so that you can okay. Yeah, but I can imagine because physical therapy, occupational therapy at school, um, speech. Yep, speech therapy. <laughs> okay. Um, they have nursing for him. He is an aide at school. Okay. Um, they have a little note on his desk that says water at 9, water at 11, water at 1. So he walks down to the nurse's office. They try to give him some space to be grown. Um, so they let him walk ahead without knowing that they're behind him watching. And he goes down and he hooks himself up and the nurses help set him up and he does his own water. He's actually doing it right now. Oh, neat. So I guess then your other kids, because I think you have... um, Two others. Okay. Um, So they are, this is just their way of life. They're used to this. We don't make it the center of our household. Um, We don't make Jackson's disabilities the center of anything we try to treat him like he's just a normal little boy right. he knows that he has these things like every morning he wakes up and it's such a big deal to him because he'll wake up and he'll come in my room and he'll be like ma no headache <laughs> and, and yeah. on one hand i'm so happy no headache but on another hand it's like it's so sad that that's what he thinks when he wakes up yeah like, yeah. he sleeps with a blue emesis bag by his head in case he throws up in the middle of the night. So oh, gosh. Just, but, so, like, his little sister was born into this. So, she. this is all she knows. Oh, yeah. But his older brother, um, he took it hard because they were best friends. My oldest name is Caleb. Mm-hmm. And Caleb was five when Jackson was diagnosed. And Jackson was like a normal, healthy, happy boy. He played baseball. He ran around. He jumped. He was so smart. He climbed. He was full of life after the hemorrhages when everything was taken. So my oldest um, kind of separated himself because it was like that wasn't what he was used to. He didn't know what to do with it anymore. Mm, yeah. But now that he's getting older, he's um, he's doing better with it. It's just hard uh, is he protective of him like um like you know if you go out and and you know he's he's a little different people probably um you know you get the stairs or whatever are they very protective my daughter is yeah yeah my oldest he works he's a senior in high school he plays sports so he's not with us a real lot mm-hmm. um but he he helps with him like he tries to keep him he has meltdowns. He has these horrible meltdowns because oh. he has social anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, so anybody with a child with autism knows if you go in places like a grocery store or where there's a lot of people or a lot of noise, it, it triggers mm. some major emotions. So my oldest will walk with him and try to distract him and talk to him when he's with us. But it's mostly my daughter. She's she just turned nine. And... She's just like a little mother hen with him, and she's so good with him. And she'll she'll go over and she'll distract him, and she'll talk to him and hold his hand. And we went to church this morning, and he started having a hard time, so she reached over and held his hand, and we brought a drawing pad, and she drew with him. And oh, that's it's, great! It's a community <laughs> that that when they say it takes a village, it really does. Um, personal question here, if you don't mind me asking, um, how how has your husband been? Because as because I I have a special needs son who's severely um, autistic, and as a dad, of course, we we we, we want to fix everything. Yeah, and the fact that <laughs> you know we can't, we kind of isolate ourselves. Um, that's just a personal thing. So, how has your husband 
been with with a with everything and b <laughs> have you guys been have you guys have had therapy um as we a whole have not, as a family? We're, actually, we're talking about it um jackson mm -hmm. receives therapy um my husband is active duty air force so he works a lot but he's in the beginning it was hard um he didn't know what to do like you said like dads want to just fix there's got to be something to do to fix this <laughs> like let's help him let's fix it <laughs> what is that <laughs> <laughs> i think that's a new feature on the uh on apple devices <laughs> They All right, fix it, Dad. Amazing. Fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> he was a set off fireworks. Fix it. <laughs> um, but no, now my husband, he's he's learned like Jackson will have aches and pains that aren't really there, but it's anxiety mm. taking form of like my shoulder hurts, my neck hurts, my legs hurt. Um, so we just take it minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. And it can we can't go on vacations. Um, oh, we can't same. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you don't want to change that routine. It's too much for everybody. And that's why I told my husband, I was like, if we go on vacation, it's not really a vacation because you're just doing everything you do at home in a different place. <laughs> like, yeah. And have to take everything um, with you and yeah, try to water yeah. supplies, feeds, medicines. Yeah. Um, whatever toy they're using at that time, the drawing stuff, whatever. So, I mean, he isolates himself some. He's getting a little better, but we're talking about therapy, honestly, right now. Um, that's, yeah. some, that's something that I need to do myself because, you know, we, uh, other than isolating ourselves as men, we end up, or we end up working a lot just to kind of distract ourselves and so talk to him be like hey i'll talk to phil phil's like yo you need <laughs> go to therapy <laughs> no for, for real because we don't even realize that we actually need it because as, as a man we want to be able to protect our family and be we, we want to be the the anchor and the strong point but we can only be that for so long or we'll end right. up break down you know so you got to tell him you, gotta, you know go go do it well he's active duty air force 21 years but he actually i want to say one and a half years ago, started a pressure washing company as well. Mm -hmm. So after work, he works. He and works, like right yeah. now, we got done with church and taking care of the kids. And then he had a job. So, yeah. Yeah. Can I ask about the church? Of course. So how is how is uh, how is your faith um, helped you? Um. Well, my dad has really strong faith. Um, my grandparents, their faith was very strong. Mine was pretty strong. Um, and then Jackson was diagnosed and I'm not going to lie for a bit. I started to lose my faith. Me too. Um, yeah. It, you're like, why, what, what in the world is this? <laughs> and you know, if our God is so good then, but then I found a small church and I started going and then I realized, you know, Jackson has a purpose. And not everybody's purpose is the same. We're all put here for something different, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and Jackson, honestly, with this diagnosis, has touched a lot of people, and he's made me better. So in um, 2013, I took the leap, and I was baptized. Oh, and then he had his hemorrhage. And... I thought for sure I was just going to fall apart and my faith would just be gone. But it oh. got so strong. We had people from Australia, Japan, um, everywhere, everywhere I can think of, sending prayer blankets and cards. And he has a Facebook and just being involved. And all of a sudden, he woke up from his hemorrhage, his coma, and... Um, he defied all odds. So I'm like, you know what? That's not, you can't say that that's not something big. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and 10 years later, even after that. Yeah. And he wouldn't just make it defined. Five, so. Well, when they sent us home, they were still, you know, he's not going to feed himself. He's not going to walk. He's not going to, you know, prepare basically is what they told me. So we went home and when we went back for a follow-up in August of 2014, the doctor came in and she was in shock. She was mm -hmm. like, God, 
He has his ways. Jackson yeah. is a miracle. This is not what we expected. Do you think but that doctors lack empathy? I do. Because I, I just, I know they have to tell you, you know, but I feel that they don't know how to, to speak to people because, you know, I'm going through a lot of similar things that you're going through, but I, I feel that they don't know how to actually communicate other than saying this is going to happen. Cause like, what if you were a different type of person, right? And they said, Oh, he's not going to live past five. What if you just gave up, you know? Yeah. yeah. There's people that just give up, but I mean, I had accepted it. They told me that. And I remember crying all the time. Like my son's only gonna make it to five. He's three. He has his fourth birthday and I'm like, time's ticking, you know? Yeah. Waiting for the shoe but, to drop or something. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I'm just waiting for something to happen and nothing yeah. was happening. But then when the shoe fell and he had the hemorrhage, I was like, Oh, good Lord. Here it is. And I but wonder doctors, he came out of it. <laughs> well, I think doctors speak statistics, you know, like what's the average kid that has this? And I don't know if you in your community, I mean, uh, or if you there is a community that you belong to with other kids that have this i mean so is it the average kid that has this this is what happens you know no. but the jackson has defied that odd he, everything like he's the average kid that has it usually in the same place um i know a little boy that has it he goes to chop with us okay um he has some some of the thing same things as that jackson except for Jackson will never go through puberty, so I have to administer shots for that, too. We're getting ready to start him. Okay. Whereas this other little boy, he started getting his puberty, I think he was eight. <laughs> oh, wow. My son. <laughs> yep. yep. I told him, I was like, I'm not ready. Like, Jackson, when you look at him, he doesn't look almost 15. He looks maybe 9, 10. He's, okay. he's a, he, he looks young. But I'm like, yeah. oh, I don't want to do the puberty. <laughs> but yeah, they they all um, they all tend to have vision issues. But I think it was Jackson's hemorrhage that did it in for him. That caused all of his everything to happen: his temperature instability, his thirst mechanism, everything. Because even after he was diagnosed with cancer and he was on chemo, he went on to play baseball. I mean, he couldn't, we had to make sure he didn't hit his head, but he was jumping on a trampoline. He was climbing. He was playing. Really? And I have so, he was just a normal, full of life, healthy boy besides the cancer. Um, yeah. And then some vision loss. But I mean, now he's legally blind. You would never know. Um, he's without his hearing aids. He can't hear you <laughs> at all. Um but and I yeah, remember I the other day you mentioned about how he's even he's even gotten smart about that and he either turns him down or you know oh, yeah. if I'm talking to him and <laughs> Jackson, now you need to stop right now. This is un unacceptable. He'll look at me and he'll go, click, click, click. I can't hear you. <laughs> oh my god. Did gosh. you just turn your hearing aids down at me? <laughs> he's got attitude. Oh, sad. Or yeah. he'll say to me, he's like, you know I have bad memory. <laughs> That's but really funny. the newest part the newest thing is when he starts getting that little bit of sass i'll be like jackson you're being sassy and he'll go well i am a teenager i'm like oh, <laughs> oh my gosh That's oh my gosh yeah so he has such a good personality i mean considering everything he's he's really a trooper well he's let me really tell you trooper. we when we moved from kentucky to back to New Jersey, my mom and dad offered up, hey, why don't we get a big house and all stay together? Because my husband had to go to South Korea for a year. And I was like, what am I going to do? <laughs> so mm -hmm. we got this big house and we all lived together. Um, we split everything. My dad works with Jackson with certain things. My mom works with him with certain things. I do the mom stuff. My husband does the play stuff. Everybody has a role taking care of Jackson. And I honestly feel like that has gotten him so far. Yeah. See, that's what I was going to ask too. I mean, cause it sounds like you've got a really strong support system. I could not do it myself. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, your family, I, I assume your church community, but your immediate family, you have well, some. Well, our church community is new. 
Okay. Um, we had we'd gone to a really good church before we left for for Cincinnati Children's. Okay. And when we were in Cincinnati, the Northern Kentucky area, we didn't go to church because I mean Jackson had the hemorrhage. Everything was so busy, appointments mm -hmm. almost every day for three years. And then we came back here and we just, our church had changed, the pastor left, it was just different. Um, so we'd stopped going and what my dad did is a year ago, he started for Lent. He was like, I'm going to send out a scripture to our family every Wednesday and we're gonna call it Scripix. So he sends out a, just a verse of scripture through Lent last year and an explanation of that verse. And it turned into a weekly thing. We're still doing it. And on Sundays, he does Bible school with the kids. Oh, and on that's great. Tuesdays, he does Bible study or a Bible quiz where he tests them on what they learned on Sunday. And we just went to the, our new church for the second time. So we're hoping we're going to have a church family behind us now. Oh, that's great. That's we great. We do have some members of our old church that are still in contact. Um, but honestly, after Jackson was diagnosed, a lot of people disappeared from our lives. Mm -hmm. I think Phil's kind of, you kind of said the same thing, didn't you? Yeah. And honestly, it's better that way. It is. It is. Because if they weren't really down for the, to begin with, just get rid of the extra fluff. You know, I agree. <laughs> I agree completely. Uh, even family members. I mean, yep. Even my own, members. my own direct, like, so I'll be honest. So I, I'm not close with my sister or my mother. Like they've only seen him, my son one time and he's 11. No. So wow. yeah. that's their loss. It's not his. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's didn't a, you he's say a that special boy. And then Phil, didn't you say something about um, just they weren't convinced some of the, some of the family. And I don't know if it was yours yeah. or your in-laws or something that just, Right. So in the the black community, <laughs> I'm going to say well, there's a lot of denial when it mm. comes to um, non-visible, you know, diseases or um, illnesses because you, you can't see it. Oh, it, it, you're not really sick or just pray it away or, you know, um, he'll be fine or more discipline, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> where, oh, uh, I a, see that a, a lot. Yeah, a, a lack of empathy or, or B, just um, a complete misunderstanding, you know. So it's well, better I've for us to just disagree. That, yeah, people have said that. Well, he looks fine. I'm like, thanks. Yes. And you look smart. <laughs> like, I mean, what do you say to that? <laughs> yeah, I've had, a, I've had it where they're like, he doesn't look autistic. I'm like, well, Dominic, can you go do an autism for this nice gentleman? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so like, yeah. Can you that? give her one of your quirky things, please? Because yeah. she doesn't believe us. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, so I get it. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't. That, that that's a lot of it's just people don't understand what they don't go through or what they don't see. Yeah. And that's it's not fair to our kids. It's honestly it's not fair to us as parents or the family that stays by your side. Like our life is hard. People get frustrated. Well, why can't you do this? Why can't you do that? Well, you know, oh, honestly. Oh man. That's Jackson that can't too. Handle it. <laughs> how how do you deal with the people that that try to give you the worst unsolicited advice? Like, have you tried this? Well, yeah. wait, hold on. Have you tried this? Have you done yeah. this? Give them this thing. Like, come, yes, we we've tried everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your advice. We've tried that. Um, that didn't work for us. But I appreciate your thoughtfulness. <laughs> bless your heart. <laughs> yeah, bless your heart. That's right, Southern. Bless your heart. We all know what that means. How much does, does how much does uh, does Jackson know? Like when it comes regards to what's going on, does he know everything? He knows he has cancer. Okay. Um, he obviously, he knows that he, he has short term memory loss. He knows. Rememory, rememory. Remember that. Remember. <laughs> yes. Rememory. Um, he knows he has to have the shot so he can grow. He knows that he has to get his water. So his sodium doesn't go high and we don't go to the hospital. Um, he gets blood draws. He knows that he's covered in bruises because he has low platelet levels. Mm. But I don't think he quite understands. He just knows what he hears. So, okay. 
Okay. But when he tells me, I'm like, yep, but that's okay. And then he'll say, mommy, why do I have such a hard time remembering or things? And I'm like, honey, mommy has that problem too. <laughs> we just right. kind of make it yeah. so he doesn't, because he has so much anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he feels so isolated and so all alone. Yeah. 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 So I try to be like, oh yeah, sometimes mommy can't hear things too, because he can't hear very well. Or, or he'll tell me, I'll say, what did you say? I didn't hear you. What did you say? And he'll be like, I think you need hearing aids. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have your glasses on, mommy? I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, see, but see, it's that personality too, it that is. even with everything that he's going through still comes out. Mm -hmm. um, so what, from a support standpoint, what can people do? Um, I know that the concern is about the um, research, not, not a lot of funding is going toward childhood cancer. Is there anything that we can encourage our listeners to do that would... Honestly, you have a fundraiser for your school. Talk to your school. Talk to your local offices. Put on a bake sale. Put on a, like, make little... I know the kids are into the um, rainbow loom. Pick a cancer. Pick a cancer that kids go through, be it blood cancer, brain cancer, um, any of them. Pick a cancer. Do you Find what the color is. Make a cancer ribbon. Sell them. Whatever you donate, go to your local children's hospital and give it to their research team. Every little bit helps. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Take your kids. Honestly, I encourage parents to take your kids, the ones that, you know, when, when you go on Facebook and I, I don't. I used to get annoyed at this, but I don't anymore because I used to be in this group. You know, mm -hmm. you go on Facebook, please pray for us. My my son has a runny nose. Like, my son has a cold. Pray for us. I don't know how we're going to get through this week. You know what? Take those kids when they're feeling better to the Children's Hospital, to the Ronald McDonald House. Take them to donate their time. Wow. See yeah. what some of these mm -hmm. kids are going through. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's always ways to raise money to donate to children's hospitals research or pick a family in your community, get to know your, your community, get to know if there's kids that are suffering like our community. We've lived in this town for going on six years. We have no community support. Okay. Find a child in your community. Get together with your local church. See if you can do something to raise money for them because be it autism, cancer, um, anything, even severe asthma. These parents, like, we struggle financially. Um, oh, hospital imagine. bills, alternative medications. Like, I mean, Phil, you know you have a child with autism. There are certain things you have to buy that insurance doesn't cover just to help them through a day. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. find a family that needs some assistance. Get a little pot together. Collect some money. Donate gift cards for gas. Um, yeah. Make some meals and take them over. Anything to help any of it. Yeah, totally. But people me. shy away from you. We have one family. There are neighbors across the street. That um, That's our outside support. But, wow. but yeah, I mean, I highly encourage the schools. When school starts here in the north, it's September. In the south, it's August. September comes, let the kids wear gold on Fridays just to raise awareness for childhood cancer. Do a fundraiser. You do them for, for like your book drives and stuff. Do it for the month of September. Whatever you raise out of the fundraiser, send it to Children's Hospital of Philadelphia or... If you live See, in the South, I mean, any of the hospitals, Tampa Children's, like. I think that's a great idea. And I think it's a great lesson for kids, honestly. Oh, definitely. That, that, Don't also, shy your kids away. Let yeah. them be involved. Now, mm -hmm. I, um, you and I were talking too, and because I, I just thought this was a, a, a good story or a, a, you know, I think a realistic story probably for what happens and Phil, you could probably relate about when you're out and say they're having a meltdown. Mm-hmm. And then what do you do? Because then you start getting the stare. So you get the comments. And I think, Brooke, you were mentioning about you had a discussion with some teenagers who the, weren't yeah. weren't being, you know, less, they were being less than kind. Fair. So, mm -hmm. Well, they're not taught. These children are not taught. They're actually taught. I see more people out there that make fun of and stare 
Mm. Then, and the parents as well, like, hey, take this as a, walk up to us and ask. Take this as a learning moment for your child. Hey, Jackson's having a major meltdown. Instead mm -hmm. of stare, walk your child over and ask a question. I'm not going to be insulted. Like, I mean, yeah. I had teenagers. Jackson walks funny. Um, he's a fall risk. He's unstable. His feet turn out mm -hmm. and um, he shuffles. He can't really. Yeah, he's a waddler. Walk. Yes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I was taking him to the bathroom. We were out having pizza. And when we were walking by, a group of girls probably about between 13 and 15 were mocking him and laughing. So I walked Jackson down and I set him down and I walked back and I was boiling, but I knew that I couldn't lose my cool. So I sat down and I explained to them, I was like, what you just did was highly inappropriate. Do you know that little boy is autistic and has brain cancer? I said, before you pick, step back and say, hey, maybe they're dealing with something or maybe mm -hmm. something's going on. Don't pick on them and laugh and make a fool of them embarrass them they already are embarrassed that they're different than people mm -hmm. yeah. hurt their family hurt their siblings i had to talk with the girls and their parents and then the girls ended up apologizing and crying but i've had adults i mm -hmm. had a stroller for jackson one of the big conveyed strollers because he couldn't walk well and his stroller was a safety he melted down less <laughs> if you can imagine yeah. But he was melting down and a woman walked, looked right at me and walked past me to Jackson and bent down on him. And he, she was like, are you OK? Like I'm beating him. <laughs> like, oh, gosh. So he looks and it scared him. I walked over. I was like, he's brain cancer and he's autistic. He's fine. He's having some hard times right now. And she says, oh, I'm so sorry. And she walked away. It's like. Yeah. The it, judgment. Wow. It's, it's, there's a lot of it. it it's weird. Cause like I, I consider it a, a blessing and a curse for Dominic because he doesn't know what the heck is going on. If somebody was right. making fun of him anyway. Right. Right. But, um, the, so like when we're all together, my wife is the firecracker. So she'll go, she'll get up in your face <laughs> and, cur and curse you out, you know, but normally when it's just, when it's just me and him, if he's starting to act crazy, I don't get a lot of looks because I'm six foot three, 300 pounds. No one's going to look at me anyway because they're scared of me anyway. So, But when when he's with mom and he's starting to act funny or act, uh, have a meltdown or get violent because Dominic is very violent and Dominic oh. is big, too. So he's 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 11, but he's almost five foot ten. Right? Oh, my gosh. Um, and, and so we had one incident um, where we were at the grocery store. Well, he was at the grocery store with Lucia, my wife. And he was having a meltdown and um, the police got called. Right. Mm. Um, luckily, it was a woman that was there. Uh, I'm saying this because she had a little more empathy. Right. And so I left the studio here uh, because the, the grocery store is right down the street. I left the studio here and I went there and there were other police there uh, just shopping. Right. So I actually went up to them. I told them, hey, come here. And they're like, um, OK. So I brought them over <laughs> and I was like, I need you to look at my son. This is Dominic. This is what he has. This is who he is. I need you to get used to his face in case you get called so you don't kill him. Yeah. I mean, That's what serious. It, yeah. <laughs> and and it, they, isn't it a shame that that has to even cross your mind yeah. as a parent? Yeah. And, and Phil, um, didn't you get a sign or something too for the. Yeah. So, yeah. um, Timu is great at this. <laughs> also, Amazon. Uh, our whole cars are decked out with like autism um, stickers and decals um, and signs, um, all that stuff, just so we can have some additional awareness, just in case if we happen to get pulled over, they can kind of see all that stuff, just so they can be like, okay, you know, my son has he he wears a thing on him that, that says you know he's nonverbal. He may not comply. You know, he may ignore you. He may be oh, violent, yeah. stuff like that. It's a shame that we have to do that, but it I is. just want any type of extra uh, precaution because he likes to elope too. He'll run away, you know, if, if he if he wants to. And so that's mm -hmm. just uh, any type of extra precaution is great for us. So I mean, Timu, Timu was great at that. It was cheap, cheap stickers. You know, I give I them out Etsy. to my friends too. <laughs> Etsy, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I mean, that's it's, it's a shame you got to think about that. But, right, you have to think for other people because they're not sometimes, especially in those circumstances where they don't understand it or it makes them uncomfortable. Um, anything that that's just out of the norm, you know. So it's a shame you have to think of that. 
Yeah, that's my big mission for now is to try to educate the um, the police and the sheriff's departments just because, you know, we all know the stigma when it comes to people of color and the police, you know. And so, yeah, and you it, know, my yeah. son doesn't, he can't comply. So the first reaction is to, is violence. And I don't want that to happen. So, you know, we, you know, we try to educate, you know, the sheriffs and all those and mm-hmm. it, they're, they're doing well, some stuff now. Yeah. Everybody on, on things like, definitely you have an autistic child that is nonverbal. That's so hard. So say he wanders away from you or your wife and he starts having a hard time and then somebody tries to like, wait, no, he's autistic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tries to grab him There's, or something, you know, uh, uh, does, oh, they don't that know does how not to work. Handle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, what do you think the future looks like? What do you see the, in the future for you? Jackson and your family, or can you look that far ahead right now? We try. Yeah. Um, my yeah. husband and I have been talking about, because Jackson's going to be 15. Um, my oldest is going to be 18, and he's graduating, and then he wants to go out on his own. And then it's like, I don't think we're ever going to be empty nesters. I told my husband I don't want to put Jackson in a home. Um, but I also have to think into the future, like, I'm not going to always be around to take care of him if, if he has a full life mm-hmm. or when he's older. Um, it's just so hard because it's such a question. Mm-hmm. But I know um, that he has a purpose, and I know that God has put him here for something great. We just aren't sure what it is yet. I mean, he's in the process of helping people all the time and mm. bringing awareness and I know a lot of people will message me and they're like, when I'm having a bad day, I just think of Jackson and the things I've seen on his Facebook. And I realize like he's, he's my hero. And I mean, yes. he's my hero too. So Absolutely. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Cause I see a lot of things on there and it's um, Jackson's fight, right? Facebook mm-hmm. at Jackson's fight. Yeah. And go look at that, read that. I mean, it's just amazing what, you guys have done and the strength you show and just the support that you have. And I just think that he's an amazing, amazing kid. He's a great boy. And, and you guys, what a wonderful, you know, what wonderful parents he has Mm -hmm. and your mom and your dad, of course, I'm very partial. You know, what can I say? (laughs) Of course. Um, You're all family. So I, I'm, I'm partial, but um, I I just find, it's an unbelievable story. So, um, so if they want people want more information, go to Jackson's fight. Mm-hmm. Where else would you recommend anything off the, um, any other Facebook groups that maybe you think would be beneficial? I mean, if, I mean, we have, we're on a bunch of Facebook sites. There's, I mean, you want to get to know if you are, I know there's parents out there with kids with low grade gliomas. So that's kind of the category in which Jackson's tumor is. There's low grade glioma Facebook pages. Um, forums there's even jackson has the gtube i'm on a site because it, i was new to it at one point mm-hmm. um i'm on a site for to be kids so gtube and gtube parents and i actually just started i want to say six months ago there was a lady in our town um like literally five minutes from us she went on our next door site she has a little girl she's one now when i went started going over she was I'm going to say six months old, um, failure to thrive. Mm. They're first time parents. She's a tiny little peanut. Um, she's 13 months old and only weighs 15 pounds. Um, she has a, she's tube fed because she can't eat. She can't swallow. She throws up all the time. So I responded. I'm like, I, I have experience with tubes, um, NG tubes in your nose, G tubes, um, if you need help, I can come. So she asked me, can you come on Thursdays? So now I go every Thursday, a lot of Tuesdays, some Wednesdays on their date nights. And I kind of been an advocate for them, helping them with their daughter. Um, oh, so that's I mean, phenomenal. You are a phenomenal woman, Brooke. And I, <laughs> I appreciate everything that you shared with us. And I hope that, you know, others will, you know, reach out or get at least gain Mm -hmm. encouragement from what you have gone through and what Jackson's gone through and your whole family. 
um, and see that there is light or there's some support. There's other folks out there, other uh, families who, whether it they their child has brain cancer, maybe it's just some sort of a chronic illness, um, yeah. but that it's got to be hard. It gets hard, um, but oh, there's Jackson's, some support. Everything is unknown. Everything with Jackson is unknown. He has so many things that we just, doctors can't tell us why or what they are. Mm-hmm. So we're mm-hmm. left with no answers and tons of questions. But I mean, in the community, people can call the hospital and speak to social workers and, mm-hmm. um, hey, what can we do? Can we adopt a child during the holidays to bring them toys? I mean, there's things like that. You can do so many things to help families. I mean, just reach out, pick a department at your children's hospital. If you have, if you are partial to children with autism, contact the developmental department at your local children's hospital. Hey, what can mm-hmm. we do for a family? We want to donate gas cards. We want to donate like takeout cards for the parents or if there's a local toy store that's like family owned or something, I'm going to donate gift cards so they can get their child some toys. Like there's tons of stuff people can do. They just have to have the want. So if people would get out and just, instead of stare and judge, ask questions and then go from there and help. That's great advice. Absolutely. Cause that's the first thing. The gut reaction is to make fun of things you don't understand. Mm -hmm. The hard thing is to actually ask the question and stand up there and say, you know what? I I'm ignorant to what's happening here. I just don't know. Can you tell me? And you that's know what? the brave we do get thing. Stuck on that, like I know people don't. They want to ask, but they feel uncomfortable. So sometimes mm-hmm. I'll just, if there's a little kid staring, I'll say, "Do you want to ask anything about him? Or he has cancer? Or like you see those cool things on his ears? Those help him hear things like that, just to kind of break the ice. So kids are like, "Hey, he's different, but like it's okay to be different." Yeah, it is okay to be different. Yeah. Not everybody's all the same cookie cutter. Absolutely. Well, Brooke, I just appreciate so much you sharing your time today and talking with us about this. And is there anything else you want to share that maybe we didn't cover that you want people to know or things you want people to do? Um, How can we help you help Jackson? Uh, You know, I don't know. (laughs) Okay. Um, I don't know. Just don't treat us. Don't treat us like with kid gloves. Us as parents, we just, we want to be like the other parents. We want you to talk to us about things other than our kids sometimes, other than just what we go through with our children that have disabilities. Like talk to us, how are we doing? Like, hey, what have you been up to? What shows you watching? You reading any books? Not just, don't make the focus just about our children that are struggling, treat us normal. (laughs) That is is so true and I think our circle of people that we associate with only know that part as yeah. cause that's what's taken over our entire lives. So that's, that's, that's where their are. point of point of conversation is with us. And I'm like, yo, why don't you ask me about walking dead or something like that? You know, right. like, I watch TV too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I get it. I, I know we it. don't have a lot of downtime, but like, I know Phil, you're probably just looked at as, Dominic's dad, like, oh, look, yeah, autism is their whole life. Cancer is my whole life. No, it's not. I'm reading a really good book right now. Like, I watched a movie the other day. Ask me about the movie. Like, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you're still normal people. You just happen to have going, be going through an experience. Yeah. I mean, we don't mind telling you about it. We don't mind talking about it. But, I mean, talk to us like we're normal, too. <laughs> like, yeah. We nope. miss that. Well, Brooke, I just appreciate it so much. I just, and I hope that maybe um, down the road, maybe you'll come back and do a follow-up and tell us how things are going and so that we can all kind of just keep track and see what's happening with with Jackson and with you and the entire family. And I just, and then Phil, hopefully we can find out. Hopefully things are better with Dominic. So I just want, uh, uh, I just appreciate everybody's time and I want us all to, hopefully, you know, put our best foot forward on these families that may have children that are different and maybe just ask the question, how are you? How are you to the parents? So, well, thank you so much. And I appreciate the time and we look forward to talking to you again. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. (laughs) All right. Thanks guys. And make sure to visit our website, medicalmazepodcast.com. 
All the episodes are there. We have blogs for each show. And uh, yeah, this was a very deep episode. It was. Don't go anywhere, Brooke. But we'll catch you guys later. Bye. Bye. Bye.